The study is about the challenges facing uh, the effort to establish red on the ground. And by on the ground, I mean uh, within specific boundaries uh, in specific locations by subnational initiatives. What we found is that proponents are, are facing uh, pretty large challenges. Um, and among the largest challenges involve uh, tenure and by tenure we mean their ability uh, to um, assure that those who are going to be responsible for keeping forests standing and for managing them well are well and legally identified as the right holders to the stream of benefits uh, anticipated from RED as well as those who are going to be responsible for keeping forests standing. And perhaps uh, most of all related to tenure is the importance of assuring that um, any claimants on the lands within the boundaries of a red project are kept at bay and are prevented from converting forest to non-forest uses. Another main challenge uh, identified in this study is uh, what we're calling the disadvantageous economics of red. If red is going to succeed, it needs to um, basically mobilize a stream of income um, aimed at keep, keeping forests standing and have that compete successfully with the national and subnational economics that aim to convert forests to non-forest uses. There is grounds for hope based in what we can call a forest tenure transition. This gradual evolution in the direction of uh, providing expanded uh, rights of ownership and access to uh, local stakeholders. Um, but in relation to the needs of RED, this forest tenure transition is actually quite slow. Um, I say, however, that there are grounds for optimism because RED itself has provided some motivation to national governments and most definitely to uh, red subnational initiatives to clarify tenure and also to strengthen it at um, the local level. New findings are showing that although red is potentially uh, going to be pretty successful in providing the carbon additionality or the um, the slow deforestation that would generate the forest carbon credits that can then be sold and can then serve as a stream of income that assures that, that forests are standing. Um, in theory this would happen but in fact um, for various reasons that large anticipated stream of income has not yet been produced. What our study found is that about half of the initiatives that, that we are studying, uh, 11 of the 23, when asked, will they still be functioning as a RED initiative uh, in 2015, their answer was 90 to 100 percent yes. Uh, but then you look at the rest and there, there is some doubt uh, about well, whether they can continue functioning as a RED initiative. For some of those, it's simply because they're transferring responsibility to another organization. For others, the doubt is uh, more fundamental, and it has to do with these challenges that they're facing. And for others, it has to do with the fact that they are skittish about involvement in, um, in red forest carbon markets, and they, they favor an alternative idea that does not rely so much on forest carbon markets. And for still others, um, they are heading in the direction of trying to stop deforestation through a, um, a broader landscape-wide uh, approach 
that might be called low emissions development and that does not, is not necessarily fundamentally tied to the idea of red. On one hand, the study does um, point to evidence that there is some cause for concern about where uh, red is heading and to what extent it can follow through on the um, original idea and end up being the device for stopping deforestation that was originally envisioned. On the other hand, um, there are some grounds for hope and I would point to two things in particular. One is that the rate of deforestation in Brazil between 2005 and 2011 went down quite precipitously. Um, and we need to bear that in mind when we get despairing about the opportunities for slowing or stopping deforestation. Now mind you, uh, what was propelling um, this decrease in deforestation in Brazil was only partly uh, their involvement in RED. It had a, a lot to do with um, government policies and with uh, grassroots and NGO initiatives and in some cases uh, some um, market-focused policies that ended up slow, slowing um, the rate of deforestation. Nevertheless, um, we need to bear that in mind when we start getting worried about whether RED can come to fruition. Um, the other um, area of possible hope is to look at um, what is being done in, um, in California with their cap and trade system and the way that that is uh, functioning to support some uh, red initiatives around the world. The amount of funding that's being currently generate, uh, generated through the cap and trade system in California and worldwide is infinitesimally small in comparison to the need. Uh, nevertheless, the fact that it is actually functioning and that it might grow over time um, needs to be borne in mind as a, a possible indicator of opportunities in the future.